What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we are covering summer drop shot fishing. It doesn't matter if you're fishing clear, deep reservoirs or shallow, grassy fisheries. Today's video, I'm talking about my favorite baits for largemouth, for smallmouth, for spotted bass, how to rig them and how to catch more fish in the dog days of summer. Let's go. So right here I have a drop shot rigged on a bait caster and a spinning rod. So it totally depends on your fishery and your, um, your confidence. Do you like throwing a, a drop shot on a spinning rod, light line, exposed hook, or do you like fishing a drop shot on a bait caster, a little bit heavier line, weedless Texas rig setup, uh, totally depends, but hopefully after today's video, you guys have confidence, enough confidence to fish both. Now, summer drop shot fishing can be a really big category, right? It depends on the type of fishery you have. It de de uh, depends on the type of, of cover or bait fish that you have in the water. It depends on the size of fish you have. You know, are you fishing for two and a half pound spotted bass on light line or are you fishing for eight to 10 pound largemouth in uh, heavy cover, in lay downs in grass? But a drop shot is probably the most versatile bait or at least technique, one of the most versatile techniques there is uh, on the market, you know, I did a video a long, long time ago talking about the Senko and is that the most versatile bait on the market? You know, definitely a Senko could be fished a lot of different ways, but a drop shot, you know, suspending that bait up off the bottom. That is what is key, right? So your bait, depending on how long of a leader you tie, you could have a, a two inch or you could have a two foot leader depending on uh, bottom composition if you're trying to get up above the rocks or the pea gravel, but a drop shot suspends your bait up off bottom and really suspends it in the fish's face. Uh, you know, if fish are on bottom, they kind of got to look up at it and come up to it and that is key. So a drop shot, it's versatility for me is a confidence bait no matter where I go in the country. It doesn't matter if I'm fishing, well, even even uh, Florida, I have a, a technique that I like to throw more power shotting, but you know, up, sh up north on the Great Lakes, out west, you know, Clear Lake, there's a time and a place for a drop shot. You know, Oroville, Shasta, obviously a lot of those tournaments are won on a drop shot. So no matter where you are in the country, a version of this technique will put a lot of fish in the boat. And uh, it's, a, it's one of my favorite most confident baits that I have, and I have one rigged with me no matter where I travel in the country. So let's start off. So a drop shot in most people's minds, I assume, at least my opinion, is that it's a light line finesse technique. It's a, it's a bait that catches them in the springtime, and it's a bait that catches them in the fall and a winter when the fish are real kind of lethargic and you just kind of want to sit there and just put a bait in their face. And all those statements are true, but you can fish a drop shot 12 months out of the year. It is August, it is hot. I love flipping and pitching grass mats or grass patches, isolated pieces of cover, shade spots on a dock. And I can do that really, really quickly and really effectively with a drop shot. You know, a shaky head this time of the year, most anglers are throwing a shaky head. And that's why I'm talking about this because heck yes, you can catch a ton of fish on a shaky head, especially you're out off of ledges or you're fishing offshore rock, whatever it may be. But just, even if you're throwing the same worm, but you know, switching up that presentation, getting that bait off a of bottom, it's just a little bit different and will help you catch fish when uh, maybe the shaky head bite is slowing or those fish are over pressured with that technique. So let's talk about the more commonly known drop shot technique. You know, you're talking your spinning rod, like a 610 medium light or light or a seven foot light, medium light, light line, four, five, six, seven, eight pound fluorocarbon 
a real light wire hook, that's a mosquito light, and a real finesse bait. That is the most common drop shot setup. And that works extremely, extremely well in clearer, deeper reservoirs. Uh, reservoirs that don't have a lot of stuff in the water, algae bloom, grass, that sort of thing. So let's cover uh, my summer setups for these and then we'll switch gears and uh, for you guys that like to fish grassy or like to fish for bigger largemouth or like to fish uh, fisheries that have just a lot of grass and a lot of stuff in the water, we'll talk about how to rig them up on a bait caster. So for the most part, <clears throat> my setup, like I said, it's gonna be a 6'10 to a seven foot, seven foot two, a little bit shorter uh, rod. It's gonna be a medium light or a light uh, action rod. I'm using, normally, I just got back from a trip up north chasing big smallmouth with like 40 foot of visibility, so I went straight fluorocarbon, but normally I'm throwing like a 10 pound braid or a 12 pound braid to a fluorocarbon leader. Long leader, 15, 20, 30 foot leader, depending on the depth I'm fishing, but I like that, uh, I like that braid, that casting distance, don't really, it doesn't, Seem to it seems to deal with that uh, line twist a little bit better than the straight fluorocarbon. Um, but I tie my leader depending on the depth of water that I'm fishing. Usually, if I'm fishing a, a reservoir that has 15 foot of, of visibility, my leader, my leader is at least that uh, just because I don't like having that braid out in front where those fish can see it. But I'm going with a number two size two owner mosquito light hook if I'm throwing kind of a smaller worm, smaller bait. Now, that's really where this technique gets really kind of sophisticated. You guys know that I've done videos on this technique in the winter. We know when that water's cold, everything in the down there in the water column is kind of uh, lackadaisical and uh, just lethargic. You don't want a bait that has a ton of action. On the flip side, in the summertime, you want a, a bait that is just dancing down there. That tail down there kicking. This is actually the Reigns uh, Bubble Shaker. I'm going to get to baits here in just a second. But that is a really cool bait. It's that bait, same kind of bait fishy profile, like your shad profile, two and a half, three and a half inches, but has a ton of action in the tail. And then I rig my leader about 16, 18 inches. Uh, and then I tie on, see that guy right there? That is tied on. I hate, that's a, that's a tungsten sinker. So you guys know that tungsten's uh, a little bit more expensive than lead. And I hate when I catch a, a big spotted bass or a small mouth and they come up and head shake and you know, fish goes this way and my weight goes 30 yards that way. I just hate doing it. So uh, a huge tip, if you guys can find them, I'll link them down below in the video description, but tie on drop shot weights. Um, they are a lifesaver. Just like every drop shot video when I rig these up, you guys always ask about these clips right here. This is the Cal Coast Fishing Cali Clip. It comes one side with a hole on it for putting your exposed hook through. The other side just has a slot for your line and they pop onto your rod just like that and you just set your line in there and it holds your drop shot weight or your Texas rig hook, whatever bait it might may be, but uh, you guys always ask about those and that's what those are. So that is my light line setup. Usually, like I said, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, four to eight pound fluorocarbon depending on the size of fish or the water clarity. But now let's talk about the baits because that's where, that's where uh, it gets really, really important. So this is actually, this is a cool Busby bag. This is a, the quick cube. This is a, a MD, a little bit deeper cube. These things are really awesome. I just, like I said, I just got back from a trip up north chasing smallmouth, and I just took my favorite, my favorite baits and just put them in there. It's waterproofed, sealed. You don't have to worry about that stuff, but let's go ahead and I'm gonna sort some of these baits. I didn't do it before this video started. I got a little bit of everything in here, and like I said, drop shot fishing can be so, there's so many baits on the market um, for this technique, for that situation that kind of, I kind of painted, you know, that clear water, 
summertime fishing, you're you're typically fishing, at least I am, I'm fishing 15 to 30 foot. I'm fishing deep out on uh, rock piles, out on points, main lake points, um, creek channels, bends in the creek channels. I'm fishing deeper. That's where I'm slowing down and I'm I'm fishing slower. I'm already I've already ran a deep diving crankbait through there. I've already ran a jig or a or a swim bait. Now I'm I'm looking at my electronics. I know there's fish down there and I'm just trying to get those fish that don't want to react to eat something, okay? So, <clears throat> for the most part, let me just show you this rod right here. I like to throw this style of bait, right? This is actually the X zone. This is the finesse slammer. Okay. You guys have heard us preach about X zone recently. In a lot of videos, just their uh, buoyancy in their baits are uh, really cool. They sit really, really horizontal in the water. And that's important, especially when a fish gets to sit there and look at your bait and kind of study it and decide if it wants to eat it or not. Okay, but that's electric shad. That's a, obviously a great, great uh, shad imitating color. But you can see how I have this hooked right there, okay? <clears throat> Normally, when I'm fishing this style of, of bait, I am fishing it exposed. You see that? So at this bait is gonna sit just like this in the water, gonna have that, that hook point right out front. That's 90% of the time, that's how I have it rigged. If I'm fishing, like say like uh, Great Lakes or something like that, where there's a lot of rock, big boulders, I will kind of just bury, let me rig this for you guys. I'll just kind of bury that hook point into the tip of that bait. These baits are super soft. So when you feel that pressure, you reel down and set, that hook point comes right through. But it just helps me come through cover a little bit better, okay? So getting back to the baits, I like a two and a half to three and a half inch bait. That shad profile, some of my favorites. I already talked about the, the Rain's uh, bubbling shaker, okay? Lots of action, looks really good underwater. That's an extremely good one. Uh, lots of fish caught, lots of smallmouth caught on a recent trip on that bait right there. <clears throat> you guys heard me talk about this guy right here. This is that, like I said, that X, X zone. That is quickly becoming my favorite drop shot bait. You know, for the last several years, it's been like the, the flat worm, uh, the smally smasher is another great one, but they all kind of have that same, that same bait fish, paddle tail, flat kind of tail to them uh, action, and they work really well. So that, that smally smasher, that's actually the junior crush. Uh, this bait is awesome. They're they're really, really soft. You guys have heard us talk about these ones for a long time. Really good colors. But that's that junior crush worm. Again, it's all about mimicking the bait fish. You know, we got those cooler nights like I was talking about. We're gonna have that that uh, that fall transition coming. So if you can find the bait fish, you will find the bass. And then once you find those fish, having that bait fish profile really, really helps, okay? One other little deal for you. If you are fishing fast, again, this is the time to fish aggressively with your drop shot. You know, shake it, hop it up, let it fall. You're dragging it and you're shaking it. You're getting that tail down there kicking. Um, another great bait to throw if you like fishing that style is gonna be the this is the three inch uh, Easy Shiner by Kitek. Same, same general size, right, as all these, except it has a little boot tail on it. So it's gonna, when you're shaking that worm and you pop it up, it's gonna swim up, it's gonna swim down. Uh, that is another great bait. So again, I will link some of my favorite uh, finesse style drop shots. I'm gonna call these finesse style, clear water finesse style drop shot baits because there's hundreds on the market. But that bubbling shaker, that finesse swammer, um, that junior crush, smally smasher, those will get them done. They'll have a little bit different action, a little bit float in the water. Um, you know, so it all depends on, on what you like as an angler. So pay attention to that. But those are some of my favorites. Now let's change gears. And let's talk about 
basically power fishing a drop shot. You know, here we're on Lake Chickamauga, lots of grass, lots of laydowns, lots, lots of backwaters. It, it's really hard to fish this setup here. You can do it. You know, that four pound test, light line, uh, super light rod. That's a 822. That's a drop shot rod. That is uh, my favorite drop shot rod for spinning. Uh, you could do that here. If you're fishing around a marinas or docks or laydowns, you're going to get your heart broken because as soon as you hook that right fish, it's going to own you and just bury you into the stuff and break you off. So that is where I fish. I'm going to call it a power shot, but it's a drop shot. It's just on a bait caster braid to leader, like 30 or 40 pound braid to a 12, 15, 14, 16, 20 pound leader, depending how thick of stuff you're fishing around. Um, that is an owner cover shot hook. It is a straight shanked hook. That's actually the HD cover shot. That's a bad little hook. It comes in a cover, the cover shot and the cover shot HD. This is actually the HD lighter or uh, uh, heavier wire. The cover shot has lighter wire. So that's uh, if you're fishing around uh, a little bit smaller fish, you know, here on Chickamauga, Gunnersville, you have the chance of hooking a seven to 10 pound large mouth. So that's why I like that, uh, that HD hook. But again, that's a power shot. I got a what is this? This one's actually a quarter, but you can do three eighths or a half ounce if you want. But what's nice about throwing this on a bait caster, you can cast it just as far as you can a spinning rod, uh, but the ability in tight quarters to flip and pitch. So again, I'm working this thing fairly quickly. Shake, 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 shake. Let it sit. Drag in, shake, shake, shake. I'm not just sitting there and just soaking the worm like I would do in the winter time. I want this bait up there. I want that tail kicking. Uh, these fish are aggressive, right? They're chasing bait, bait fish all around. A lot of times you flip that, you flip this bait in there, you go to check it that first time, doom, or it'll already be heavy. They'll hit it that on that initial fall, or uh, you go to check it, shake it a couple times, you'll feel that doom. But being able to flip and pitch a drop shot in the same areas that you would fish a shaky head or a jig, but instead you're suspending that fish up in that, or suspending that bait up in that fish's face. It's just a different presentation. I've caught a lot of fish doing it. So really like that guy, uh, that setup. This rod specifically, this is, I'm going to read it to you just so I don't mess it up. Again, I'll link everything down below in the video description. This is a St. Croix. Legend Elite, it's a 610 medium, extra fast. So a real, real fast, excuse me, real fast tip. So it allows you to do that shake-in. This is a cool little uh, jig rod too, a little finesse jig rod, but it works perfect for this technique. Some of my favorite worms, I really limit my worms. You know, over here on that Clearwater Finesse rigging, I probably have five or six different worms because they have different actions. Really here, I have two, maybe three. The Robo Worm, six inch. If you want a little bit bigger worm, this is the uh, Missile Baits Magic Worm. The uh, I'll show you guys the difference real quick. So if you're a guy that's not throwing the cover shot HD hook and you're just throwing the cover shot, that Robo Worm has a lot thinner body this guy right here this is the six inch straight tail worm then the missile baits a lot more uh a lot more plastic there so that's where i, I really like that cover shot hd um this, this worm's actually poured by robo worms so they have a lot of great colors as well and uh if you're a guy that really likes high float worms that worm by z-man that floating worm is really, really awesome. You set this thing in the water and that tail almost, almost goes vertically. Where I like this bait right here is working really fast around dock pilings. I'm just, you know, you pull up to a dock and there's 10 or 12 or 14 pilings and you're just flipping each one, pitching to each one. You know, that thing's falling down, shake, 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 out, 
next one, that tail has just has a ton of action with that high float. And then again, it's that Elaztec. So you don't go through nearly as many worms as you would uh, without that Elaztec type material. Okay. So those are really simple for my, my power fishing uh, setup. Again, I'm able to flip and pitch this around grass lines in grass. You can get, you know, you can get your weight up to like a half ounce, really get through that stuff and uh, elevate that bait, suspend it in that fish's face, and you're gonna get more bites. One other technique I wanna talk about real quick before I show you the true power fishing technique is gonna be this guy right here. This is actually the bellows gill. I've done videos in the past with this rigged on a spinning rod, but you guys know how much Matt and I love BFS. This bait is really cool. I can rig it vertically like this, has a real good shad profile. I mean, the bait reeks, it smells so bad and the fish just love it. Or you can do the flat profile, just a real, real wide kick, I guess, in the water. But I have it on a BFS setup. So I'm throwing, this is actually 10 pound braid to a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. Uh, so I can now flip and pitch if I want around floating docks, stuff that doesn't have a lot of, lot of uh, things, anchors or things that I could get hung up or broken off in. But I will flip it around like floating docks, that sort of stuff. Uh, and then if you want to, if you want to fish this, You could fish your favorite clear water finesse techniques on this because this is a BFS rod. It's got a good clicker system in the in the uh, in the drag. But if you're a guy that likes to power fish and you don't want to throw a spinning rod, the BFS setup is where where it's at. This is a 7-2 medium light. Okay, this is a this is the Corrado BFS reel. You guys have heard us talk about that a lot, but you can cast this thing a long way. And then when you're working it, you're working it like you would normally work a, your favorite jig or your favorite uh, bait casting bottom contact bait. But when you hook them, you're hooking them on that light line, this rod and this reel plays them really, really well, really nicely. And uh, it's a lot of, a lot of fun, okay? So there's that guy. If you guys want uh, a setup that you can rig for exposed hooks or straight tail worms, okay? Now, last but not least, I mentioned this to you guys last year about true power shotting. This is straight braid. So this is 65 pound braid. That is a heavy, that's a super line hook and that is a Missile Baits D-Bomb. Most guys, myself included, punch, especially heavy grass mats, right? You're gonna get that bait down there through the, those fish are in there. They're using that, that grass, that mat, or it could be a, a bunch of wood. You know, they're using that, whatever it is up there as, as, a, as a shade, as a cover, right? So you're gonna punch this bait through there and get to that clean, clear water down below a lot of guys will take an ounce, ounce and a half tungsten, Texas rig it and punch it through. A great alternative is taking a heavy drop shot, like a half ounce, three quarter drop shot, weight, going straight braid, rigging your favorite punch bait or your favorite creature bait and really um, showing those fish a presentation they haven't seen. You know, that's again, that's suspending the bait up there off bottom where those fish are used to that ounce, ounce and a half bait come crashing through, hit the bottom, they pop it up, but they're, ang you know, they're, they're looking down, whereas this is gonna suspend up there a little bit in that water column up off bottom, and I get a lot of bites after punching through an area, going back through and suspending that bait. So that's another cool little addition to my summer drop shot fishing. But guys, I know it looks complicated, but it's really not. If you're a guy that's fishing highland reservoirs or lowland reservoirs with clear water, 
you know, you're fishing for spotted bass, maybe some uh, mid-size, you know, up to, when I say mid-size, I say like up to like three and a half, four pound largemouth. You guys get yourself a setup like this and you will catch a ton of fish and have a ton of success. If you're worried about bending out hooks or breaking off, you know, go with a little bit heavier rod, go with a little bit heavier line. You can still do it on a spinning rod if you want. You can still use that cover shot or that cover shot HD hook. But uh, if you're a guy that likes throwing bait casters, I challenge you guys to get yourself, this is a little Corrado 70. It holds enough line, enough braided, enough braided line, enough, uh, enough backbone on the rod, enough power in the reel to get those fish in up to eight, nine, 10 pounds. Uh, I, I think nine is the biggest I've caught on this setup right here. But when you hook them on that bait caster, you just seem to have a lot more control. I will link all these worms down below in the video description, my favorite colors. I keep it really, really simple. For the most part, it's gonna be your shad patterns. On the bait fish finesse, you guys, and then on the worms, I'm going like your Margarita Mutilator 3s or your, uh, this is actually the mat, this is the PB and J, but your browns, your purples, your pro green pumpkins, that sort of thing. If I'm, I'm either going browns and purples or more like a bluegill color uh, for these guys right there. And then the bellows gill, they make some really cool colors, but usually I'm going with like the electric shad or the shaddy colors. Guys, if you have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section. I wasn't planning on speaking like, I don't know, 25, 30 minutes on this technique, but you can tell there's a lot to it. It doesn't have to be that overwhelming. Um, you know, I'll link maybe a budget combo down there and like a, a really simple, get this bait, get this hook, you will catch fish. Uh, I'll link that stuff down below in the video description. But if you want a little bit uh, of options, some different baits, different styles of baits. I'll link those down there as well. But uh, a drop shot year round is a must have in the boat for me. It's just one of those confidence baits that a weightless Senko and probably a 2.8 Kitek swim bait. If I'm going to a lake and I wanna know if there's fish there, I'm gonna have at least those three uh, techniques rigged up. So a drop shot, as you can tell by today's video, the versatility, you know, you could be thrown on four pound line or you could be thrown on 65 pound straight uh, a braid, the versatility is why the drop shot is just a proven fish catcher no matter where you are in the country. Guys, we appreciate the support. Thank you for watching. If you learned something from this video or you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you guys on the next video.